Yes, the clock is ticking as we head closer to the edge of the fiscal cliff. And House Republicans had some harsh words for President Obama after he released a budget proposal suggesting more taxes, more spending. He wants the power to raise the debt ceiling without congressional approval. The administration cannot unilaterally issue an edict like a monarchy. Congress, Congress, Congress is in charge of the purse. The government has gone wild. In that congressman's words, has the administration become a monarchy? Joining me now to explain is Republican Congressman from Texas, Ted Poe. Good to see you, Congressman. Good morning, Dave. So how has this administration become like a monarchy? Well, the president in his proposal has basically said, turn everything over to me. Give me the power, or let me just take the power to raise the debt ceiling. That seems to be quite arrogant on his part. And if he's serious about it, then what he's really saying is, I want to spend more money. That's how I want to solve the fiscal cliff problem, is spending more taxpayer money. So the president doesn't have the authority to raise the debt ceiling. He shouldn't have the authority. Congress, as y'all mentioned earlier, is in charge of the money, the purse in the United States. Of course, it wasn't just that ability to continuously raise the debt ceiling as he sees fit. It's $1.6 trillion in new taxes, $50 billion in new stimulus spending, just to mention a couple of the provisions of his offer. Is there any, any room for compromise where we are right now in avoiding the fiscal cliff? Well, there will have to be some compromise or have to be some plan, but uh, the president's proposal uh, is so ridiculous, the idea that he, he's going to raise some taxes, which really, if we just followed his plan, wouldn't solve the problem anyway, because the spending is so much. And then he wants to spend more money. He wants uh, another stimulus bill, son of stimulus. The first one didn't work very well for the country, but yet we cannot spend our way into prosperity and tax our way into prosperity, which is what the president thinks. So yeah. I think in the House, Republicans should should finish their plan, propose their plan, pass their plan out of the House, and get something on the table from uh, the Republican side and send it to the Senate. Then what should that plan include in terms of added revenues? Well, we should re revise the tax code and make sure that some of the loopholes that are in there uh, are removed. So streamline the tax code down the road, remove the entire income tax philosophy and go to something else, fair tax or flat tax. We can't do that now. But start there, but make, make sure that we, we do look at spending and spending cuts across the board at different programs where we can uh, really cut some money. Rather than just mm -hmm. continue to talk about it, let's really do something and do it next week and move it down to the Senate and let them look at it. So there's substance and there's also style, Congressman. How do you feel about the fact that the president, instead of sitting down with your leader, John Boehner, is out there in what appears to be a campaign style, giving speeches instead of negotiating? Well, it's disturbing in some respect. He is the leader of the country. And rather than be in Washington, D.C., in a room working with everybody involved that can make these decisions and push legislation, Republicans, Democrats, senators, uh, members of the House, and talking through the nitty-gritty, he proposes a plan, leaves town, and goes and campaigns about it. It's very difficult to communicate and talk about things if the president is not in Washington to talk. Especially with roughly two weeks to go before Congress recesses on the 14th. Congressman Ted Poe, always good having you on. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dave. Coming up